Welcome to section 5.3 on the double angle formula. So we're going to look at the double angle formulas for sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta. First, we're going to look at how we get these formulas, and it's going to help you remember them in the long term. Okay, so basically they're all based off of the angle addition formula. So let's recall sine of x plus y. That's equal to sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. So when we're talking about a double angle formula, that means I want to know what sine of 2 times some angle is. So sine of 2 theta. And you can think of this as adding theta plus theta, right? Wouldn't that give us 2 theta? So then I use my angle addition formula, and that would be sine. In this case, x and y are the same, right? They're both theta. It would be sine theta, cosine theta, plus cosine theta, sine theta. And then notice these are like terms, aren't they? It's just sine theta times cosine theta, the other one, the order's reversed. So if I combine like terms, I have 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So that's our double angle formula for sine. Sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta, cosine theta. All right, let's see how the others play out. So cosine of x plus y, if you'll recall, that's cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x, sine y. So that means cosine of 2 theta, which would be cosine of theta plus theta, equals cosine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine theta. And then the first term, I can just rewrite that. That's cosine squared theta. And the second term, sine squared theta. So I have cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Beautiful. Now, remember from our Pythagorean identities, recall that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, right? So that means 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, and 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. The reason I'm having you remember that is there's two other versions of this double angle identity, okay? So the first one is if I replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared here. Okay, so I'll show you how that's going to play out. So I can rewrite cosine 2 theta as 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So this is cosine squared theta. And then I have 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now you might say, why would you do that? Well, sometimes you want to work with the double angle and you don't want to have a mix of cosine theta and sine theta. You want it only in terms of sine theta. And then similarly, you can do it, it can replace everything to be in terms of cosine thetas, right? So we have cosine squared theta minus, and then instead of sine squared theta, instead of sine squared theta, I'm going to write one minus cosine squared theta. So parentheses, so 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now be careful here, right, because this negative is going to distribute, and it's going to make it a positive cosine squared. So then I have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. All right. So really, if you want, <clears throat> you can just memorize this first one cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And hopefully it's easy to memorize because if you think back with the angle addition formula, it's cos, cos, that's why you have cosine squared. Sine, sine, that's why you have sine squared. And then if you need to get the other two, just substitute in one minus sine squared or one minus cosine squared, okay? The last one, tangent angle addition formula. So we have tan x plus tan y over 1 minus tan x tan y. So if I have tangent of 2 theta, that's going to be tangent of theta plus theta. 
So that's tangent theta plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta, tangent theta. So then in the numerator, I can combine like terms. I have 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. All right, so here's a summary of all of the double angle formulas using u's instead of thetas. It doesn't really make a difference, okay? Um, but for most of the examples that I work through, I'll use theta because that's what the problem dictates. Okay, let's work out a couple examples. So find the exact values of sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tangent 2 theta for the given values of theta. So they told me sine of theta is negative 4 fifths, and theta is between 270 and 360 degrees. So what this tells me is theta is in quadrant 3. So let's draw out a triangle representing theta and that it terminates in quadrant 3. So here's x, here's y, quadrant, no, I'm sorry, that's quadrant 4, 270 and 360. That's over here. Okay. So here's theta, and I know sine of theta is negative 4 over 5. Okay, so that means the opposite side, that's negative 4. Hypotenuse is always positive, and then this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? So I can fill in the missing side. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out, we're going to use our double angle formulas for <clears throat> sine, cosine, and tangent of 2 theta. So sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta. So that's going to be 2 times, well, they told me sine theta was negative 4 fifths. Cosine theta, if I come to the triangle, cosine is going to be the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 3 over 5. So then if I multiply all the numerators, remember this is 2 over 1. So that's negative 8 times 3, so negative 24, and then 5 times 5, that's 25 down there. Okay, good. Cosine 2 theta, it's up to you. You can use any of the three double angles. I just usually stick with the first one unless there's a reason to use one of the other two. So that's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. All right, so cosine of theta, that was 3 fifths squared minus sine of theta was negative 4 fifths squared. So this is going to be 9 over 25 minus, minus, when I square negative 4 over 5, it's going to become positive 16 over 25. So now I have a common denominator. I'm going to subtract the numerators. 9 minus 16, that's negative 7 over 25. All right, and then last one, tangent 2 theta. There's actually two ways to do this one. So first way, just so we get some practice, I'll use the double angle formula. So it's 2 times tangent of theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Okay, so 2 times, now what's tangent of theta? Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be negative 4 over 3 over 1 minus negative 4 over 3 squared. Ooh, okay, so this is going to be, in the numerator, I have negative 8 thirds. And then in the denominator, I have 1 minus 16 over 9. Okay, so let's see. If I want to clear out my fractions, I can multiply everything by 9. And then I'm going to have, let's see, so here the 3 is going to cancel with the 9. I'm left with the 3, so that's going to give me negative 24 over, and then remember this 9 distributes now, so that's going to be 9 minus 16. So that's negative 24 over negative 7, which is 24 over 7. All right? But you want to know the faster way to have just gotten there? I'm sure you do, right? 
Or what we could have done, I'll just squeeze it in here. Or, you know, tangent, tangent of two theta is sine two theta over cosine two theta, right? And we had computed both of those already. So I knew sine of two theta was negative 24 over 25. And I knew cosine two theta was negative seven over 25. And then from here, if I simplified, well, the 25s cancel out, the negatives cancel out, and then you're just gonna end up with 24 over seven. And that's way faster. And I don't have a problem. If you just wanna do it that way, no big deal, okay? So if you've already computed sine two theta, cosine two theta, you can just go straight to tangent two theta from there. All right, nice job. Let's look at another example. Find the exact values of, now they want all six trig functions, sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, cosecant theta, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they told us that cosine of two theta is one third. Okay, so they want theta. Uh, they want the six trig functions of theta. They gave me info about two theta. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, I'm gonna use a double angle identity, right? But we have to choose carefully because if I use cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta equals one third, that's not gonna help me because I don't know what cosine of theta is and I don't know what sine of theta is. So that's a bad idea. I'm gonna put an X through it. I'm gonna use the other two versions of the double angle identity so I could solve for sine theta and cosine theta. And the other kind of weird thing is, they told me where two theta is, right? Two theta is between 360 and 450. But that doesn't tell me where theta is just yet, right? So if I wanna know where theta is, I'm gonna divide the inequality by two, okay? That way I'm just left with a theta in the middle. And then 360 divided by two, that's 180. And 450 divided by two, that's 225 degrees. So if theta is between 180 and 225, that means theta is in quadrant three. Okay, and we're gonna keep that in mind, that we're in quadrant three. Okay, so to start off, I'm gonna use one of the other versions of the cosine double angle identity. Let's use two cosine squared theta minus one. Okay, and I'm gonna set that equal to one third since they told me cosine of two theta is one third. Now this is good because I only have one unknown, cosine theta. I just have to isolate it, meaning I have to solve for it. So I'm gonna add one to both sides. So I have two cosine squared theta equals, well, one third plus one, that's four thirds. And then I'm gonna divide by two, so cosine squared theta. So remember, when you divide by two, you're multiplying by a half. So I'm gonna be left with um, two thirds, right? Over here. And then we'll go ahead, we'll take the square root of both sides. Don't forget to put your plus or minus. And then we know that cosine of theta is either equal to positive or negative rad two thirds. Well, this is when it comes in to play thinking about which quadrant we're in. So if we're in quadrant three, that means cosine of theta is negative and sine of theta is negative. So I'm gonna choose the negative rad two thirds and I'm gonna write that as rad two over rad three. Okay, and then we have to rationalize our denominator. So I will multiply by rad three, rad three, and we get negative rad six over three. So that's cosine theta. All right, now let's get sine theta. Any idea how I would do that? Well, we would just use the other double angle identity. So the other version for cosine two theta is one minus two sine squared theta equals one third. And now I'm gonna solve for sine theta. So <clears throat> subtract one from both sides. So we have negative two sine squared theta equals what's one third minus one? One third minus three thirds. Negative two thirds. And then divide by negative two, that's the same as multiplying by a negative half. 
And you're gonna have sine squared theta equals one third. Okay, again, take the square root of both sides. Put your plus or minus. And then we have sine theta equals plus or minus. Well, which one is it gonna be? It's gonna be the negative because we're in quadrant three, negative. Square root of one is one over rad three. And then if we rationalize, that's negative rad three over three. Okay, so there's sine theta. And then we're ready to roll. Now we can find the rest. So I'm gonna start listing everything out, all six trig functions in our typical order. So sine theta is negative rad three over three. Cosine theta is negative rad six over three. That means tangent theta is gonna be sine theta divided by cosine theta, right? So let's do a little scratch work down here. So tangent theta would be negative rad three over three over negative rad six over three. So the threes cancel, the negatives cancel, and then I have rad three over rad six. Okay, well, rad six, I can rewrite that as rad three times rad two. So then the rad threes cancel and I have one over rad two. And one over rad two is rad two over two. So tangent is rad two over two. All right, and then cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. Remember, it's easier to take the reciprocal before you rationalize the denominator. So take the reciprocal of negative one over rad three, that's just gonna be negative rad three. Secant theta, if I take the reciprocal, that's gonna be negative three over rad six, but I have to rationalize. So multiply by rad six, rad six. So this is negative three rad six over six, <clears throat> but I can cancel more. So this is gonna give me cancel. This is a two now, negative six over, negative rad six over two. And then the last one, cotangent theta, that's the reciprocal of tangent, but take the reciprocal from right here. So it's just gonna be rad two. Woohoo, we made it. Okay, that was definitely intermediate level for sure. Okay, so be proud if you hung in there. Nice job.